over the last couple of days um, we are having a celebration event to celebrate um, five years of the Barapa Water for Country project. Um, it originally started with three people doing a cultural mapping project and now it's um, it's turned into, uh, I think we've had 33 members so far come through and um, we have a steering committee of nine active members that manage that steering committee which govern the project. And uh, everything's come together as if it was like a jigsaw puzzle and we've put the final piece in and uh, we're quite happy about that so that's why we're having the celebration. We've worked on different aspects of our culture and heritage including language, knowledge of areas of country which are highly culturally significant to each and every one of us and, it, and when I say that I mean about 33, 34 of us and uh, a lot of the young fellow, young people that we skilled up through knowledge and learning what was there in the traditional way of life of our ancestors and what was handed down to us. One of the main highlights is um, being accepted back on country and community by my elders and my people. Being able to come on country, able to practice my culture in terms of making Barapa uh, artefacts or out of Barapa wood, doing clap sticks, boomerangs, coolamans, and yesterday we done a scar tree, done a canoe and left a big scar tree there. Which has had been planned for a long time. We tried, tried once before and, and failed, so it's been a success today. With, um, with, with the idea of displaying that canoe in an info centre to um, show people about a little bit about Barapa culture and um, pretty much bringing bring culture back to country and, and using culture practices as, as a management tool. To me personally, um, one of the things I've been waiting to do for a long time and being able to be a part of that process was brilliant, especially with Barapa people and other people that come along. This project's um, given them confidence to talk about their country and um, also giving them the confidence to um, talk to the government on how they should be treated and approached and how to move forward. Really excitingly, we've had Barapa people sharing their knowledge with the rest of the world as well. So it's been fantastic to see Dixie and Trent and Laura um, present in places that I expect they never thought they'd ever, uh, they'd ever be presenting. So taking information, Barapa knowledge, sharing it with, uh, with others. Some of the highlights for me has been going to the Blue Mountains with Dixie and Uncle Nev and presenting at the Australian Stream Management Conference. Um, for Barapa to really be able to tell their story was fantastic. They wrote a, a, an amazing paper for that conference. I think for us, it's uh, we've looked obviously at environmental watering has provided us with an understanding of environmentally what can we achieve, but cultural flows and the cultural values that the Barapa mob have held uh, for this part of the world has been significantly different. Just getting water back onto country so that uh, the plants that they really value, the animals that they really value, have got a place for them uh, to come and enjoy. Uh, just to be part of that country with water in the landscape has been so important to Barapa and it's something that we've learnt so much about in, in part of this project for the last five years. Over those five years has been some fantastic highlights of our work together um, and our walking together on country. We've been out on country with, uh, with archaeologists and botanists and ecologists learning about the environmental and cultural values of Gumbau Forest. It's a really special place. Um, we've been doing Aboriginal waterway assessments across nine different sites to enhance knowledge of the cultural values um, of some really special waterways and wetlands. Uh, been working with Barapa people to heal country through planting about 10,000 trees um, in places like the Avoca Marshes. We learned about to uh, identify what was a mound, what was a cooking area, what was a camping area, what scars meant on trees and all that kind of stuff fit, just, just slotted back into what we've, we've learned from our growing up. Oh, highlights, well, just yesterday was one of, one of them, but the highlight is me bringing my kids um, back on country and showing them, um, my, showing where I camped and where I was young and where my mum took me and, and, and then also being able to have access to country. The way the uh, young people came together they embraced one another and they embraced what the project was all about and they developed it in, in a manner which they understood by our guidance and we couldn't do no more than that and they respected each other for what they've learnt. I'm just pleased that I was 
budget, please. Pre articulated laws part of this. And as uh, was said yesterday, this project is used as a shining light for the rest of the projects which are firing up all around Victoria. And that was said yesterday. And uh, I'm, I'm proud of that too. I think what the Barapa Water for Country project has really created one of those first starting points for the state starting point for cultural flows, how do we then build that into the plans here and we know that that is then being taken across the whole state and probably the Murray-Darling Basin as well and I think from where we started with little things, big things grow, those the first three people then building into what I think is going to be something that we can all be proud of for a very long time.